Hey guys, how's it going? This is the bald metal nerd uh, coming at you with uh, the fourth video in my series on Metallica. And of course, I'm going to be talking about their 1988 release and Justice for All. Now, I got this album at the same time as Ride the Lightning. It was part of my second exposure to Metallica. If you want, you know, more details about how that happened, just go ahead and watch my review of Ride the Lightning if you haven't. Uh, now, this album, of course, is the final chapter from their classic progressive era. And they wouldn't write songs similar in style to this era until Death Magnetic 20 years later, or at least more accurate thing to say would be is they tried to emulate the style on Death Magnetic and sort of succeed and fail in the same. But I'll get into that when I actually talk about Death Magnetic. Uh, so how did their first album, After the Tragedy of Cliff Burton, turn out? Well, let's find out. Uh, track one, of course, is Blackened. It's a very intense song uh, on the album. It's a great opener with an awesome backwards guitar intro. Um, track two, and Justice for All. It's an awesome epic song with a ton of riffs and time changes. Track three, I Have the Beholder. It's just a great mid-paced song. Track four, this um, it's you know, one, it's an epic semi-ballad. It builds into a thrash fest by the end of the song. Now, this song's also significant because it was their first music video, uh, which exposed them to a much more mainstream audience. And honestly, I find it to be the best music video really ever made by pretty much any band as the video uh, reflects the lyrics in the song and is expertly melded to just be an extension of the song it's it, i've it's you know it, it just it just it's so perfect this the music video they made for this absolutely great um you know and it's the first time they got any mtv play whatsoever you know or i think radio play in in their whole career i mean it wasn't significant um but it was the first time Following that, uh, The Shortest Straw, it's a great slamming anthem. Um, after that, Harvester of Sorrow, um, it's a great song with an interesting groove. Uh, after that, you've got The Frayed Ends of Sanity, it's a, it's a great catchy song. Um, after that, you've got a freaking awesome, uh, it's called To Live Is To Die. It's a nearly instrumental, um, the only vocals are a few lines of poetry uh, written by Cliff, which do fit in the track very well, but it's just spoken words. They're not sung, it's just spoken, and it fits into the track very well. Um, and f conclusion, um, Dyer's Eve. It's a great thrash burner to close out the album. Now, um, obviously since you know Justice for All was their first album after Cliff died, the way they mixed it minimizes the bass guitar, but it is still audible in the rhythm section. Now, obviously, you know, Jason Newstead, who, you know, joined the band for this album and everything, um, he's a real good sport about, um, you know, about it, which is, which is good. He, he took, he took it in stride, you know, um, now in my opinion, uh, this album is just as much of a masterpiece as Ride and Puppets are. James' vocals, in my opinion, these are the best vocals that James Hetfield ever did on this album. I mean, they are just at their peak. Now, this is the band's least favorite album from this era. They felt they had taken the formula started on Ride the Lightning as far as it could possibly go. Felt the songs were too long, too complex, etc., Personally, I think that is a huge part of the album's charm. Uh, to me, the songs aren't too long because they manage to be intense and interesting throughout the duration of the songs, unlike some of their 
long songs from some of their latter era stuff, which of course I'll be getting into. I mean, it's it's hard to talk about their classic albums without you know realizing what would happen later. You know, um, now there's a lot of fans uh, rate this album as the least favorite uh, from this era of the band's history, and a lot of people rag on the production on this album. Personally, I think it sounds pretty good. It's brighter, heavier, and cleaner than Puppets in the production department. And it does seem like it was the first album where they seemed like they tried to mix and master it for the then fairly new CD format, rather than vinyl. And it pre it shines through pretty great on a good set of speakers, but on set some headphones, it doesn't sound the best. It is a bit uneven. I know it's a bit of a contradiction, but I don't think the production is bad as some people say it is. Now, by this stage of this of their career, they were selling millions of albums and filling arenas, which is a hell of an accomplishment considering prior to this album they got zero radio play and MTV wouldn't touch them before one. Now, I know here in our wonderful modern internet age, you're thinking to yourself, lots of bands get audiences without radio, and M MTV never plays music anyway. But you have to keep in mind, this was a different era. Um, you couldn't just put some videos and songs on the internet and get an audience. That was not an option. Back then, the only way you could get any sort of an audience was word of mouth, and you got that by touring relentlessly, and promoting the hell out of your band, yada yada, and hoping people would talk about your band and pass it along. Um, I mean, it's still kind of similar to that, but it is a lot easier with social media and stuff uh, than what it was in the old days. I'm, you know, just because I can tell you, I am aware of a lot more bands now than I was back in, you know, oh, before the internet was a, was a major force. Um, and, you know, the fact that they managed to amass such a huge audience without traditional media channels back in the age before the Internet just shows you how great they were at their peak. But personally, I love this album and think it's nearly flawless. I, the only slight nitpick on it is the production. But the production, again, is not bad. I give it a 99 out of 100. It's a must-own for all metal fans. Um... You know, I'm sure, again, if you're watching this, you probably have it. But I would even go as far to say, if you call yourself a metal fan and you don't have this album or their other classic, you know, progressive era albums, go ahead and get these albums now. Seriously, all metal fans should have these albums, period. Now, that is enough preaching. Uh, their ex Now, their next album is a transitional point between their classic period and modern period and it has a hell of a lot of controversy surrounding it amongst Metallica fans and I of course am talking about the Black Album which I will be talking about next so that wraps this whole thing up I really hope you guys enjoyed watching if you did like what you see please thumbs up comment share subscribe all that fun stuff thanks for watching and I will catch you guys next time